Thank you for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I am Lurian Graham Carter. In the headlines, Queen's Baton makes stop in Dominica. Over $700,000 for roadworks in Canefield, RBC and East. And Dominica recognizes World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Stay with us for the details of these and other stories after this. When you think about it, food is life. That's why people come to Dominica. They don't only come for the waterfall or the scenery or the view, but it's the flavor. Sometimes it is just what they can taste. The flavors that we have here, you can't find anywhere in the world. They are truly unique. I've been in business 17 years and I see so many guests come and go. My business is to put a smile on their face and something good in their belly. Everything we serve here is local. It comes from all over Dominica. So we get fresh lettuce or vegetable or fish from saint -Sauveur. All our products from the farm. Sometimes go on the farm and have them pick. The uniqueness of the experience is in how authentic it is. I heard the um, taxi driver promoting my plantain chips. I said, that's the best plantain chips you can ever have. I don't have to go and put on TV. <laughs> Money is not everything, but leaving customer with a smile, friendly service, and they will come back. This is the real Dominica. I'm just proud to be a part of it. My name is Maurice Smith. They call me Rudy. Tourism is my business. Thank you for staying with us. Members of the Queen's Bator Relay team are currently in Dominica as part of the relay around the world. As part of the tradition of the Commonwealth Games, the Bator, which carries a message from the head of the Commonwealth, Queen Elizabeth II, will make a stop in every Commonwealth country ahead of the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Upon arrival in Australia, where the 2018 Games will be held, the Queen's message will be read by the Queen or her representative to officially open the Games. Sandra Osborne, Honorary Legal Advisor for the Commonwealth Games Federation, gave some background information on the importance of the Queen's baton to the Games. The Queen's uh, baton is really a symbol of the Commonwealth Games, um, which are held every four years. And the baton represents the coming together of, of the 70 uh, countries and territories of the Commonwealth and it, it will make it, its way through every single one of those uh, countries, inspiring people as we go along. We've already been to Africa and inspired thousands, uh, thousands of, of people on that journey. We're now on our uh, Caribbean journey. Uh, the battle um, began its journey on the 13th of March this year, 2017, at Buckingham Palace, when Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth put a message in the battle, and it began its journey um, as I said earlier, from you know, um, first in Africa onto the Caribbean, and, and it will continue after the Caribbean. It will go into the Americas, and then onto Europe, Asia, and then Oceania, and finally um, to Australia. The Baton will have covered over 30,000 kilometers during its journey to Australia for the 2018 Commonwealth Games. It will take 388 days to make the journey the last 100 of which will be in Australia um, and it will have covered 330,000 kilometers by the time it has, um, you know, it has completed that journey. Um, and this of course is all leading up to the 21st Commonwealth Games in the Gold Coast, um, Australia, which take place between the 4th and the 15th of, of, of April um, 2018. Uh, the, at the opening ceremony, which is going to be held on the 4th of April. Uh, the message in the baton will be removed from the baton and read by Her Majesty if she's in, um, you know, um, there, and if not, by her representative. And at that time, um, we'll all be able to, 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 to enjoy the message and the, and the baton um, uh, and the significance of the um, baton and and then um you know at that point the games are open six thousand six hundred athletes and technical officials from the 70 commonwealth countries will converge on the gold coast for these games osborne remarked that commonwealth movement signifies more than just sports 
but it is also a cultural monument to inspire and bring together Caribbean people as we seek to understand each other better. Media Liaison Officer Kate Shaw highlighted the importance of the baton to the Commonwealth. The Queen's baton represents our past, present and future and also embodies the people and the spirit of the Gold Coast. It has a very beautiful story behind it. On the back we have macadamia wood that is native to the Gold Coast and was also used by our local indigenous people. They used to travel through country and plant the seeds to mark their path. The centre is the stainless steel stringer, which represents our present. You can see at any point in time where we are on this remarkable journey around the Commonwealth. And you can see Dominica is at the very top here, I'll point it out, just here. The front represents our future. It's made by reclaimed plastic from the oceans and the waterways of the Gold Coast. And we also have the bright lights. Now, it's a note, I know it's a little bit overcast right now in Dominica, so we hope that this baton brings a little light to everybody's day. It represents all the different colours that we see on the Gold Coast. The uh, golden, the yellow is the uh, beach, blue our oceans, and green our rainforests as well. And we have Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's special message on the side of the baton for everyone to see that will be read aloud at the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games at the Gold Coast next April. The team met with His Excellency the President of Dominica, Charles Savre, at the State House on Thursday morning. This year, the Queen's Baton Relay began in Africa, then on to Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Barbados. The next stop is Antigua and Barbuda. In community development on Wednesday, five contractors signed for projects to rehabilitate roads in Canfield East, and Canfield RBC to the sum of $774,000. At the signing ceremony at the Canfield Community Centre, Honourable Member of Parliament for the Maho constituency, Raven Blackmore, stated that the projects would be implemented through the Canfield Urban Council. I'm hoping that we can start tomorrow. What is happening here today could not have been possible without the tremendous support from the Prime Minister, who is also the Minister for Finance. And I want to also um, say good afternoon to my colleague Minister, Honorable Justina Charles, who is also the Minister for Constituency Empowerment, for facilitating today's event, and all my colleagues in Cabinet. This government, which has been led by a visionary leader, have decided to rehabilitate all our community roads in the, in the country and to ensure that we create the environment for, for expansion and for economic advancement. At Canefield East, Shane Alexander was contracted to construct 300 meters of rigid pavement at a cost of over $200,000. Another 160 meters of rigid pavement in Canefield East will be constructed by Stalin Anthony at over $120,000. Richard Alexander has been contracted to construct 85 meters of rigid pavement at Canfield East at a cost of over $66,000. At Canfield RBC, a squith banist will construct 400 meters of rigid pavement and 160 meters of drainage at a cost of over $200,000. And Colonel Simon will construct 100 meters of rigid pavement and 40 meters of drainage at a cost of over $70,000. Chairman of the Canefield Urban Council, Maxime Powell, addressed the Honorable Parliamentary Representative on behalf of the Council. I would like to use this medium to express our thanks to the Parliamentary Representative, Honorable Raven Blackmore, and the Government of Dominica for taking the initiative to undertake such an important project within the municipality of Canefield. The council is pleased to be associated with this project as it will improve the infrastructure of the community. We see the signing ceremony and the works that will be undertaken as timely and we also hope that the residents will be satisfied after completion of works on this project. 
Meanwhile, Honorable Blackmore stated the funds for road rehabilitation at River Estate has been approved and will begin soon. He gave an update of the project signed for over $800,000 at Canefield Housing Scheme. I'm happy to report that work has actually begun on this very important project that will not only protect lives, but property and will go a long way in actually managing the Kenfield River. He also stated that in the new financial year 2017-2018, roads in Upper Roche Kenfield would be rehabilitated. Between 2013 and 2016, over four hundred and twenty thousand dollars has been made available to the Canefield Urban Council for works in the community. Honorable Blackmore pledged to continue working with the Canefield Urban Council for the development of the community. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. I believe in the natural order of things. I believe in the in the harmony of things. You know, in everything we do, we have to keep it natural. I've been doing farming for now over a decade. My day is very hectic, but I make it light, you know, because I enjoy what I do. I enjoy producing the best quality goods and to make sure that the people that receive it, they receive the best that they can ever get. Right from the farm, everything that I grow, I process them back into the farm so that the same things that grow in the farm is what protects the farm. Tourism is my business. You know, it's not just dealing with the foreigners that come in, but it's preparing those things that when they come, they can feel and taste the difference in coming to this exotic island. And it starts with the farmer, because we provide the things that they eat, that they taste, that they drink. I believe in my heart that it's my responsibility to provide quality. My name is Tony Isles, and tourism is my business. Welcome back. Today, Dominica joined the rest of the world in recognition of World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, held under the theme Stop Financial Elder Abuse. According to the United Nations, virtually all countries are expected to see a growth in the number of elder persons, along with a growth in the number of cases of elder abuse. While the taboo topic of elder abuse has started to gain visibility across the world, it remains one of the least investigated types nationally. In his address for World Elder Abuse Day, first Vice President of the Dominica Council and Agent Evander Joseph noted the significant rise in the number of cases of financial exploitation across the world and described some of the forms of financial abuse. Financial exploitation takes many forms. The abuse often encompasses theft forgery, misuse of property and the power of attorney, as well as denying access to funds. The overwhelming majority of financial exploitation in less developed countries includes accusations of witchcraft that are used to justify property grabbing, ejection from homes, of and denial of family inheritance to widows, risk factors for falling victims to financial exploitation and range from social isolation and cognitive impairment to emotional or physical dependence on the abuser. Joseph stated that this year's theme reflects the importance of ensuring that no elderly person is abused financially or otherwise. This year's theme underscores the importance of preventing financial exploitation in the context of elder abuse to the enjoyment of older persons' human rights. In line with the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda and the Madrid International Plan of Action on Aging, 
older people have the right to a life of dignity in old age, free from all forms of abuse, including financial and material exploitation, which could lead to poverty, hunger, homelessness, compromised health and well-being, and even premature mortality. And finally, this news time, the second leg of the Ask, Listen, Learn program spearheaded by the Health and Family Life Education Division of the Ministry of Education has come to an end in five schools. On Thursday, a closing ceremony was held at the Dominica Public Service Union building. There are students from each school, Roosevelt Primary, Roosevelt Douglas, Penville, San Sauveur, and Bagatelle Primary Schools shared their knowledge of what they learned with performances. In attendance at the ceremony was the Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter St. Jean, Chairman of Regional Beverage Alcohol Alliance, His Excellency Dr. Patrick Antoine, Chief Education Officer, Melina Fontaine, Assistant Chief Education Officer, Dr. Jeffrey Bless, Education Officials for Health and Family Life Education, Rena John Charles, other Ministry of Education officials, teachers, and children of the five schools. The Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter St. Jean, hopes that the Ask, Listen, Learn program will be incorporated into Dominica's health and family life education curriculum. It is appropriate, therefore, that I endorse the teaching and the sharing of the sound values to our children on the requisites to avoid vices such as alcohol abuse. I am convinced that the work that has been initiated, initiated is indeed paying dividends. And that was clearly demonstrated here this morning by the various performances that were put on by you, the students of the five schools. Education Officer Rena John Charles gave an overview of the program. The program is designed to raise the awareness of the dangers of underage drinking, specifically among children ages 8 to 11 years old. It provides invaluable information on prudent lifestyle choices and utilizes research, cutting-edge technology, partners of industry, and athlete mentors to educate children about the dangers of underage drinking. The Ask, Listen, and Learn program was first piloted in Dominica in 2015 at four primary schools, Sinico, Salibier, Goodwill, and Grand Bay Primary. According to Dr. Antoine, the program ran for over 12 weeks with over 500 participants. The Ask, Listen, Learn program remains one of the major flagship initiatives in the Caribbean region. We anticipate that with the completion of this cohort of 300, and, uh, 300 plus nearly 400 students, there will be an increase in the significance and the positive impact which Ask, Listen and Learn has been having in the lives of the nation's children, equipping them with the facts and tools necessary to make substantive and powerful decisions concerning the dangers associated with underage drinking. And that's the English segment of the news. Shakira appears next with Creole Highlights. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Creole, la wese Shakira Pear. Cinq contrats sont signés pour plus de 700 000 dollars pour réhabilitation chimie à Kenfield East et puis Kenfield RBC. Il y a une cérémonie pour place à la Community Center Kenfield Mercredi. Un bon conseil là qui est implémenté pour j'ai là. Pour mon parlement, pour le constituant de ce Honorable Ribbon Blackmore, ça c'est un permet qui est fait par le résident Kenfield et puis il a délivré à ce permet là. Nous signons cinq contrats. Pour bâtir Ever Wanger Chimé en Wan Kenfield. En Kenfield East, Ever Yon Place Raki, RBC Housing Scheme. Monte promet Moon Hot Kenfield, le gouvernement avait moins 
conservateur, car il fait certain que nous mangeons tout le semaine à Kenfield. Et bien, nous avons commencé avec Kenfield East et avec Arbus Housing Scheme. Honorable Black Modi, après le projet ça a fini, attention que mettez à ce projet. Mme Parlement l'a dit, il est bien content qu'on soit signé pour le travail commencer à ce chemin là. Je suis bien content. Nous avons contrats avec différents contrats pour le chemin dans 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 le chemin. Aussi, nous avons commencé le travail, nous avons bâti le maçon à l'arrivée de la maison de la maison. Presque 20 millions de dollars pour le maçon de la maison. Nous avons fait cette année, nous représentons L'antiwe moun awan ken filo. Eve, mwen le di mersi tou bon man pou pou me menis la. Honorable Black mwen di ike kontine pou twava epi Urban Council la pou developman ken field. Adat nouvel, jodi 15 jwen se jwne pou mete atasyon a sou manye moun ka abize moun ki a sou laj. Representative ho Dominika Councilon E. Jini Vanda Joseph ba yon ladwes pou lokazyon la. Joseph dit qu'il y a un survey de tous les gens qui ont abusé à ce monde qui a sous l'âge pour l'argent et puis ça y a ça offert. Il y a aussi dit que 5 pour 10% des gens qui ont eu la tête et ont expérimenté le problème de ça. Joseph aussi dit qu'il y a autant de fois que cette situation de tous les gens qui ont abusé à ce monde n'a pas été reportée. Joseph dit que tout le monde qui a gardé le monde qui a sous l'âge pour garder le monde bien pour y vivre plus l'année. Et puis finalement, dès l'année qui passe, le ministre de l'Éducation a lancé un programme Mandé, Couté et puis Apprendre à l'école primaire à Dominique. J'ai dit une cérémonie pour faire mes programmes là pour place en Public Service Union Building là. Le programme ça là, c'est pour éduquer les enfants quand ils font la drogue ni à ce cerveau yo, et puis cadavre. Le nouvel gouvernement parle et puis le ministre de l'Éducation, Honorable Peter Seja. Le programme ça là, a... Nous avons éduqué les enfants à l'école première pour dire non pour ça nous a créé de drogue, alcool. Puisque nous avons un grand problème, pas seulement en Dominique, mais tout en région là, là on a un grand monde qui a encouragé les enfants pour participer à boire alcool. Et il n'y a pas qu'à boire alcool là pour boire, mais par an, il y a des enfants là pour acheter l'alcool là en boutique là-bas. Et pendant qu'ils ont parmi ces enfants là, ils ont bu de l'alcool. Et ça a encouragé les jeunes gens pour participer à prendre l'alcool. À ce programme, nous travaillons en collaboration avec une des um, institutions régionales. Et ils ont aidé nous pour éduquer ces enfants là. Et quand on voit bon matin là, ces teachers là, yo, Yo, un programme là. Kimberly Francis, c'est un teacher à l'école Bagatelle Primary. Francis Square programme ça là, c'est un bon programme, bah c'est étudiant là. Ask, listen and learn programme, c'est un bon programme. Avec programme ça là, um, nous um, étudions ces enfants contre l'alcool, avec qui um, effet il y a sur um, Mouelio, ça c'est Brandio avec Caravio. So, c'est un programme pour dans ces enfants, information, information qui est bon, so yo ke fè bon choix à la vie. Ça c'est tout pour nouvel akoyol, non mwen se Shaki Repair. Au revoir. Before we leave, here is an announcement. The Minister for Tourism and Urban Renewal will hold a consultation with all car rental companies on Thursday, June 22, 2017 at the NDFD conference room from 8 a.m. Please register with the Discover Dominica Authority for additional information. Please contact the Discover Dominica Authority office at 448-2045. Coming up next, tips on hurricane preparedness. When a hurricane or storm watch is issued, be sure to follow these safety guidelines. Leave low-lying areas. Protect windows with plywood boards or storm shutters. Secure outside objects. Make sure you have plenty of fuel and water. Have several days supply of food and water for each family member. If called to evacuate, do so immediately. 
ensuring you are safe is your first responsibility and it is better to take precaution than to end up injured. That's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Lurian Graham Carter. Thanks for watching.